Good morning and God bless. Um, this is an awesome teaching I found that gives glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, Messiah, Son of God, one with God the Father. Um, this is going to tie in uh, the book of Jude, the book of Luke, the book of Enoch, the book of Genesis. We're all going to merge together and give testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this, okay? I mean, the whole Bible does, but I mean, from this teaching that I'm doing right now, just um, first off, just start with the letter Jude. Jude gives a, a beautiful salutation to the church. He says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for Jesus Christ. That's May mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Amen. <clears throat> now, what Jude is trying to do is he's trying to bring the remembrance uh, to the church that which took place in Genesis and, and, and the, beginning, the beginning of time in Enoch, in, in the book of Enoch. Because he's trying to do what I try to do, is remind you of what, who your adversary really is so, be, so you can fight the battle. So you understand what's really going on. Um, so you know who your enemy really is. So you really know who your savior is. Until you really know who the enemy is and how much he hates you and, and, and what the plans are for him. You know, you're not going to appreciate what Jesus Christ is, who he, who he is, what he's done. <clears throat> so many of us are, in the world, humans, are siding with Satan and the, and the fallen angels. And everything that they do, music and, and everything that we do in the world, laws, legislation, everything that is going on right now is, is men are betraying men for the enemy. So anyway, let's get back to this, okay? Now Jude continues to write, Beloved, while eagerly preparing to write to you about the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write an appeal to you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. You see what he's saying here? What I'm trying to tell you. He says, while writing to you about our salvation that we share in Christ, the wonderful salvation, I also have to stop and remind you of the enemy and what his plans are against us. And, you know, like, like it says in the Bible that, you know, our enemy is not flesh and blood. It's the powers and principalities of darkness and high places. And he says, and he says, for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. And he goes on, he says, For certain intruders have stolen in among you people who long ago were designed or designated for this condemnation as ungodly, who pervert the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now these are, he's saying that these are evil people who creep into the church unawares or creep in and take the grace of Christ and, and pollute it and distort the grace of Christ and the gospel of Christ to, to his evil plans to thwart God and his children. <clears throat> and he goes on. Now I desire to remind you though, you are fully informed that the Lord who once for all saved a people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And he's using this as a, an example um, to Christ who came and died for our sins and saved us. And as the body of Christ, the church, that do we continue on to believe in, in Christ and not be uh, led astray by these evil ones. That's what he's saying here. That destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their own position, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains and deepest darkness for the judgment of the great day. Now this is a reference back to Genesis. The angels who kept not their first estate, who came down into the world and took daughters, and took the daughters of men who seen that they were fair, and took the ones of what they ch which they chose, and bore a and, and bore children to them, which became a race of giants, which was then and afterward. Meaning, and speaking of the flood, and it gives re reference to Genesis and also to Enoch when he talks of an eternal change and deepest darkness for judgment of the great day. <clears throat> and he says likewise, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which in the same manner as they indulged in sexual immorality and pursued on natural lust, serve as, as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because today in the days we're living in, 
are much like the days of Noah. And this is what Christ said his return would be, the time of his return would be like the days of Noah. And he gave reference to, you know, them giving in marriage and partying and drinking wine. Um, and now you have, you know, gay marriage and everything else and, you know, forced, now they're trying to force people, Christians, to make cakes for their weddings and saying that that's a law now and everything else. And you know what? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, man. He told us this would happen. This is all prophecy being fulfilled. It's not fun. It's not cool. But it's the word of God. You know what I mean? It's being, it's happening. Christ said it would happen. That's what I mean by that. <clears throat> when he says, Yeah, likewise Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which in the same manner as they indulge in sexual immorality and pursuit on natural lust, serve as an example of undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these dreamers also defile the flesh, reject authority, and slander the glorious ones. But when, and he's talking about, um, these, these are the ones who go against the Word of God and God and the prophets and the Word of God. But when the Archangel Michael contended with the devil, and he's talking about the glorious ones also, and now it says down here, if you read, um, or angels, and that's when he makes reference to Michael again. The Archangel Michael contended with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses. He did not dare to bring a condemnation of slander against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people slander whatever. Now he's saying, if Michael, being a great archangel, didn't even make a reference of any kind of um, evil sayings or words against the devil, or the evil one, <clears throat> who are we? Or the who? Are, these people are so evil that they say evil about good, the good men of God and the good angels of God. But these people slander whatever they do, not understand, and they are destroyed by those things that, like irrational animals, they know by instinct. Woe to them, for they go to the way of Cain, and abandon themselves to Balaam's error for the sake of gain, and perish in Korah's rebellion. These are blemishes on your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, feeding. Now, Korah's rebellion and things like this, this is all, I believe, in the Tanakh and stuff, too, so... And this is the book of Jude, right before Revelation. So, <clears throat> this carries right into Revelation. It's the way the Bible is structured. So, all right, check it out. So, they themselves, they are waterless clouds carried along by the winds. Autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, uprooted. <clears throat> um, twice, twice dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea casting up the foam of their own shame. Wandering stars. And those stars mean fallen angels. Wondering means that they fell, for whom the deepest darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, See, the Lord is coming, with ten thousands of his holy ones, to execute judgment on all, and to convict everyone of all the deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and malcontents. They indulge their own lusts. They are bombastic in speech, flattering people to their own advantage. Silver tongues. Demonic in their ways. Licentiousness. And he says, But you, beloved, must remember the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, for they said you, in the last time, there will be scoffers. Now, this is a book to us, guys. To all of you who believe... Or in the end times as I do. Which Jesus said, even when he was walking on the earth, um, that, you know, the, this is the end times. The end times are upon you. <clears throat> he said, but uh, scoffers indulging in their own ungodly lust, it is these worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, who don't have the Spirit of God, who are causing divisions. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in love of God, Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life and have mercy on some who are wavering. Save others by snatching them out of the fire and have mercy on still others with fear, hating even the tunic defiled by their bodies. Okay. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Now to close this off, right? Um, in the book of Enoch, 
God told Enoch to seal up his book for 70 generations. That this book was written for the future. It was, it was supposed to be sealed up 70 generations, okay? Now the reason why I said I was going to tie in uh, the book of Luke is the book of Luke does a wonderful job of documenting the, the lineage of Christ, the Messiah, and the genealogy of the Lord and Savior. And if you actually count down, <clears throat> well, if you go from the beginning, from God the Father to Adam to Christ, Christ is the 77th in his lineage. And his genealogy. From God the Father, Adam, Seth, Enos, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, ja Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. Okay, so it's from God to Adam to Noah. You, you got, you know, you're, it's, and all the way back to Christ. Christ is set number 77. So what I'm saying is, and, and, and Enoch was seven. So this book was sealed up. And, and Enoch wrote about the Messiah to come. But also about the end times that would come. This is why, and like I said in the, in the, Mark, in the teaching I just did about Mark, in the book of Mark where Christ is casting demons out of the synagogue. They all said, have, the demons knew when Christ the Messiah came. And they said, have you come here to you know, cast us into hell uh, before our time? And Christ would just tell them. And, and then they, they would recognize him as the, as the Son of God, the Messiah. And they say, look, you know, Messiah, or Messiah you know, King, Son of God, we know who you are. Have you come to cast us into hell before our time? Or whatever it was that they would say. And, and Christ would shut them up and cast them out. <clears throat> but this was, you know, from, from God to Adam, through on to, to well, from God to from Adam to Noah, is, um, or to Enoch, it was um, seven generations, and then from Enoch to Christ was 70. So the 70 generations that he was to seal up his book was until Christ came, the Messiah. And that's who Enoch would write about, was writing about. But then he said that this would happen, these were the end times that he also wrote about too, that when, when these fallen ones would return, and um, the hell would break loose on earth. <clears throat> so I just wanted to point that out. In the book of Luke, you see the genealogies of, of, of Christ, and, and all back to Adam. And he's just, he, Christ himself is the number 77th. From God to Adam and so on and so on and so on. Jesus is number 77. Enoch was number 7. So, I just wanted to point that out. God bless you guys. Think about it. Jesus Christ is King. Hallelujah.